Hey guys, welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia and I'm coming to you as always from the south of Germany. Today is uh, Sunday, it is the 24th of November 2019 and it is just Sunday morning so I pretty much just got up. I am on my very first sips of coffee for the day and yes, I am using a Christmas mug. Um, I've been out yesterday, um, not out partying because I'm, <laughs> I'm not the big party person, uh, but we took a trip yesterday and did lots of um, spending time outside and a lot of talking, so you can probably hear it in my voice, but oh well, we will get through this and I'm sure you can still understand what I'm saying. So if you're watching for the very first time, thank you so much for trying out this podcast and maybe sticking around, who knows. Um, and if you're coming back, thank you so much for being a regular viewer of this podcast. Um, you will know what this is all about. But just in case you don't, um, we have a group on Ravelry called the Happy Knitting Podcast Group. Creative, I know. Um, which is always linked right underneath this video. So you can feel free to join in there if you want to take part in one of our informal knit-alongs. All the information is in the threads. And every now and then we do other fun things in the group as well. Um, for example, right now I'm doing a tiny, tiny D stash. So you will find the link to that as well. Um, and for all of the things that I talk about, I don't do any show notes, but I have pretty good um, project pages on Ravelry. So I will always link those as well. And then you can just click on whatever project interests you. Um, if you have any questions about yarns, designers, needle size, whatever, you should be able to find it all there and it will be much easier to find that information if you just check out the project pages and if you then don't find it, you can still ask me. All right, let's have some coffee and get started, shall we? So let's talk about some finished objects. Um, I have a couple. First of all, I finished these socks which are going to be my grandma's Christmas gift. Um, these are some plain vanilla socks out of a German yarn by, das, uh, by Tausendschön in the Liebelei colorway. Um, I've talked about this yarn in the past. I'm not sure if you can get it overseas or anywhere, but it's a very good and very um, affordable alternative um, or option for indie dyed sock yarn. Um, so the two socks are done. They are not blockers because they are not uh, my size. They are my grandma's size. Hence, if I would put them on blockers, I would just stretch them out. What happened with these is, well, they look nice and they will be just fine. But, you know, with these pulling socks, they really, really depend on your gait. So sometimes what will happen is um, I will just be more relaxed when I knit one of the socks or I will be more tense when I knit the other one and then the gauge changes so you can see the pooling on the feet is quite different and I just knit this one looser I'm not sure why I have the same amount of rows it's all fine but this one is a little bit looser and so it is both wider and longer than this one whoops I think my grandma is really not going to care so there's no way I'm frogging back a sock just because my gauge changed. Like I used the same needles, everything stayed the same. It was literally just me being in a different state of mind when I knit the first versus the second sock. But they'll be fine. Um, as you can see, they're just plain vanilla socks. I did a um, fish lips kiss heel in garter stitch, which you can do with any short row heel. You pretty much just um, knit the pearl stitches. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all I have to tell you about these. Um, like I said, they'll be for Christmas. So I have one Christmas pair done, um, two pairs to go, but as you will see, really, I only have three socks to go because I've also started another Christmas knit project. So yes, that is FO number one. FO number two, I didn't think was going to happen, but then it just did. And these are my socks, which are not going to be gifted to anyone. These are the Solstice Sunset Socks, which is a pattern by Flock Fiber Studio. And they're done! Look at these, you guys! Um, I'm finding them hard to show because they are so different. You can see one sock is just much lighter and also 
um, more like minty than the other one, which I think is fun. So I'll just show you one. Um, but how fun is this pattern? It is like a slip stitch pattern on the front that also incorporates a rib. So I think these will be very, very um, easy to fit and a little bit more versatile. It also has a little cable detail on the back. It's a faux cable, which is fun. And I, of course, did my fish lips conceal again, just because I like doing that. I knit these socks toe up, which I don't do that often, but every time I do it, I do like it. And yeah, they are done. I just really enjoyed how this pattern works with a variegated yarn or a speckled yarn. I think it's really, really fun. And there are not that many patterns for variegated and speckled yarns out there. In terms of the yarn, the yarn is by Das Mondschaf um, in her Pegasus base, which is a a merino and nylon sock blend in the colorway butterfly effect. So this is my entry into the Dunder Knit, Blame Dunder Knit Along. Um, and I will blame her for many more things and cast on many more things, I'm sure. But this was the one thing that I started on November 1st and today is the 24th, I said, I think. So yeah, three weeks almost, uh, pretty much. Um, I didn't finish them today. And they are done. So like I said, I think they will stick with me. I really like the yarn. Um, I got this as a gift, gift for myself before Christmas or for Christmas last year. And now it's turned into some really pretty and fun socks. All right, that is it for um, finished objects. So let's just talk about some new cast-ons. So I already teased you guys with more Christmas gift socks. So you know that, you may know that Kai, of course, wants a pair of socks for Christmas, as he does. And not only have I started a sock, I also finished a sock. And yes, this looks like a mess. Um, let's clean it up. So the yarn that I'm using is yarn by um, Volmeiser. Um, Volmeiser yarns just tend to be really, really great for Kai socks because they're just a little bit more sturdy and they wear amazingly well. And also he really likes the colors. So the yarn that I used is one of their um, Nobody is Perfect um, skeins. So they have a lot of these Nobody is Perfect skeins where there is something wrong with either the color or there are knots in the skein. In this um, case, it is, I think, a color um, mistake, it quotes. So it's just a little bit different to what this colorway, which is called Danny, may usually look like. But I really, really like it. I don't care. I love getting these Nobody is Perfect skeins because they're just fun. And I don't need to have the original colorway. It's just I like the colors or I don't. And then I will knit with them. So anyways, this is a twin base in the Danny colorway. And... I knit one sock already and <clears throat> I'm doing what I really enjoy at the moment is um, three by one rib socks. So I did a one by one rib and then the entire leg is three by one ribbing, knit, knit three purl one, which just makes for a really, really stretchy sock. And I think it looks a little bit nicer. I really like the look of it, like they look so skinny but they will just stretch to his calves perfectly. Um, then again, a fish lips kiss heel. And for the foot, I only did the three by one ribbing on the top of the foot. I really, really like how these are pulling. Um, generally, I like this kind of pulling more than the like stripy pulling that I just showed you in my thousand shirt socks. So I think it has to do also um, Socks just tend to pull nicer with Kai's socks because for him I will do a bigger stitch count usually. Or in this case, um, because the Volmeiser yarn is already a little bit thicker, I do these on 64 stitches, whereas for myself I would probably do 60 stitches. And I just love these. I think they're really cool. I really like them and I think he will love them when he gets them for Christmas. So the first one is done. And as you can see, I haven't made much progress on the second one. I just wanted to make sure that I had it at least started before I then cast on something else. But I knit these pretty quickly. I knit the first sock in like five days, I think. So if I really just sat down, 
um, I think they would go quite fast, even though for him, this is a really long leg. Usually he likes the socks much shorter, but I just really like this yarn and I wanted to knit him long socks and I'm sure he will like them too. So yeah, that is one new sock project. Um, like I said, 64 stitches, I'm using 2.25 millimeter needles for that. And then, because apparently I'm just on a sock kick, which you will also understand when you see my acquisitions, I had to cast on more socks because yesterday we went on the train for two hours um, to Würzburg and back. So four hours of train knitting time and obviously I couldn't knit Christmas socks because Kai was going with me. So I just used that excuse to cast on even more socks. So these socks, oh no, I just dropped the tag. Do I have another tag? Yes. This is some Knit Picks yarn. This is Knit Picks Philly Chi, which I got, I think, sent from a lovely friend um, from the US. Um, this is their Ever After colorway. Um, and what I did is I actually caked it up because when I knit my socks two at a time, um, I don't really like knitting from the outside of those like pre-wound balls that you get in commercial yarn, but I couldn't untangle it from the inside either. So I just caked both of them up. And I mean, how cool do they look? I mean, they're just really pretty, aren't they? Anyways, um, so what I'm doing is I'm doing another pair of socks and I'm doing them two at a time. This time I'm doing them two at a time cuff down instead of toe up. And how pretty are these, you guys? Oh my gosh. I love these. I love these so much. I am. So um, these are most likely going to be for myself because I love myself a good pair of Felici socks. They don't last very long, in my opinion. Um, they're very, very soft. Um, and yeah, they're not the longest lasting socks, but they're just so fun. As you can tell, I did um, match them up. So... The stripes are matching on both socks and once again, no surprise, I'm doing the 3x1 ribbing with a 1x1 rib on top because again, I just think it looks so neat. I love these. So I pretty much had like the first stripe done when I started in the train yesterday and then this is what I came home with so I'm very, very happy with these. Again, I could start the heel but... I think I want longer socks for these as well. So I'm probably going to knit for a couple more stripes and then I will put in my heels. So you can see how, how stretchy it gets um, when you put in your hand or foot or whatever you do with your socks. Um, yeah, I just really, really like these. And again, 64 stitches, 2.25 millimeter US size one needle. And I'm just knitting them one uh, two at a time. So that's it for my sock knitting. Two pairs done, two more pairs cast on, and I think both of them, you could say, I'm pretty much halfway done with those as well. So very, very happy with that. I'm just knitting all the socks right now. And again, I'm just having more time to knit at the moment, which is fantastic. I do have one more project to show you. Um, before we do that, maybe a little tale of woe. <laughs> you may remember that the, um, the shawl that I showed you last week um, the Shake It Up shawl, and I did knit a fair bit on that, except I was knitting on it after not knitting on it for like five days, and I decided, oh, that would be a great project to pick up when I'm phoning with my sister. And so I'm doing all the brioche, and like I'm finally making progress because the brioche rows are quite long, and they're taking quite a lot of time. And then after like a two-hour phone conversation, I realized... On one side, I didn't do the increases. <laughs> so I tried to fix it and like go down in brioche and add increases where there should have been like four rows below and that didn't work. And then I had to basically rip back the entire section that I had done while on the phone and was back where I started. And then last night I did like two or four rows on it, depending on how you count brioche, but yeah, there was quite a lot of backwards knitting involved and that doesn't happen to me very often. I think I'm very lucky that I don't have to rip back or 
reverse knit very often but yeah that time it got me and I'm not super upset I would have been much more upset if that happened to me for example on my starflake shawl because that had a lot more stitches that would have been much harder to fix and go back and much more annoying than this but still no point in showing you today because even though I've spent quite a lot of time on it it looks the same pretty much but what I did work on is of course my Otra sweater by Scandia who is Ellie so let's just unpack this um I talked about this last week when the pattern had just come out apparently I'm doing this thing now where I tend to knit things um, just when they're coming out so um, the Otra sweater is a top-down color work sweater by, um, designed by Ellie who is Scandia Knits and has the Scandia podcast and last time I showed it to you um, I had just finished doing like the short row crew neck thing on the top and just started into the color work I think so what has happened is since let's see this is all like messed up um, this is where we are you guys how cool is that so um, where should we start why do I have like half sleeves and also yarn and needles in the bottom of the sweater what is going on here well um, like I said last time I was just working across the top color work part and um, you can see this is actually the front and this is the back which is rolling down because it needs a neckline um, what I forgot to mention last week is that I chose to do the wider neckline so there are two necklines one is very very close fitting I guess and the other one is slightly wider even though both of them are a crew neck crew necks aren't necessarily my favorite kind of construction but I see how it had to work like that with this pattern so I, choose, I chose the wire, wider one and I'm quite happy with it because it's still going to get ribbing and I just like a wider neckline and I know that um, I knit Ellie's Winterfjell sweater which was her very first um, color work sweater design I think and that was very um, close fitting on the neck which wasn't a fault at all I think it's just a preference and I know that I prefer a wider neckline. So then I knit the color work part, which you knit in the round um, with sticks. So it basically looks like you're knitting a pillowcase because there are no holes for the arms. And then once I finish that, um, it is just, you know, plain stockinette in the round. And I just really wanted to stick. I just really wanted to see, um, I'm cutting the armholes also because I wasn't sure if the sweater is going to fit. I'm still not sure because I haven't tried it on still but the first step towards even finding out if this fits um, was to seek the armholes and also I just really felt like doing it because seeking is just so much fun so um, I did the steak on one armhole and for the first time I didn't use the crochet steak method because I didn't have the right crochet hook but I did the um, knit version which I think pretty much does the same thing it's just instead of using a crochet hook you're using your knitting needles and for me it created a bit of a flatter stick um, stabilizer so I really like that I have no idea honestly where I got that from I think I may have gotten that from Ellie actually but I'm sure if you um, google it and YouTube it you will find some tutorials um, and then once I sticked it which worked like a charm um, I really wanted to at least um, start the sleeve because I just like the open sleeve stitches, um, they just, I don't know, it makes me nervous to not have the sleeve attached and I feel like once you have a sleeve attached, like it's not going to unravel, it's going to be just fine. But I just wanted to start the sleeve. So that's what I did and I knit part of the sleeve and then I decided to do the same on the other side. So I've done half sleeves for both sides. I'm doing my own decreases as well. and then I decided to put both sleeves on hold again so they're both on a waist yarn and work on the body again um, and what I really need to do now is just to put this on a longer needle and try it on so I think you're supposed to have like 20 20 centimeters of positive ease which is 8 inches 
And I went for a size that has 15 centimeters of positive ease, which is six inches. Um, but my gauge is a little bit different than I thought. Um, I think I have something between a 24 and a 26 stitch gauge and I've never gotten a 26 stitch gauge with anything ever. So I must have really been knitting tight and I was trying, trying hard to knit tight too because I know my gauge is usually too loose. So what I'm saying is, I think in the end, I ended up not with 15 centimeters or six inches of positive ease, but more like four inches or 10 centimeters. I think it's going to be fine. Um, it may be a slightly different look because of course, if I'm knitting it smaller, it's a dropped shoulder design and it's just not going to come off my shoulders as far. But I think it should be fine. I just really need to try it on is the story after a long, long winter discussion of what I did. So I'm going to try this on very soon and see how it fits and also see how the arms fit and how tight I want to knit the sleeves and all of that. But can we just pause for a second um, and look at how beautiful this pattern is? Like, Ellie is just a genius. Um, hers is like a lighter version with the dark color work. And I really like how it looks the other way around. I really like inverse and color work, color work in general. So instead of using the dark contrast color, using a light one and so on. And yeah, I'm just really curious about this. I've never knit anything with stick armholes. And I'm also not sure if this shape and this kind of color work construction um, in contrast to like a round color work yoke is really my style. I, I just really don't know about this. I don't know if this is something I will love to wear or if this is maybe not really my style but I just really want to find out so I'm very curious about this and yeah I'm also not sure if this color suits me to be honest I'm not sure what do you think I tend to like colors sometimes without really thinking about how they look on me so you know I like a lot of pink but I don't necessarily look great in a pink sweater but I do like how mild this yarn is it's a beautiful yarn so a lot of open questions here, but I'm very, very, very excited about this. And from here on, it's going to be super smooth sailing. It's basically just knitting the body and stockinette, knitting a couple of sleeves and the neckline and all of that is pretty, pretty mindless. So I'm very happy about that. Um, do you want to see a close-up of the color work? It hasn't been blocked yet, but this yarn is a 100% non-super wash wool. And it just lends itself to color work so beautifully. So I think even without blocking, it just looks pretty spectacular. Um, the yarn that I am using is um, by Garnet Salk, which is a Danish yarn company. Um, and this is their Black Hill... Is it Black Hill Super Soft Wool? Hang on, I have a ball band somewhere. I know I do. I talked about this in detail last week, so... Um, you can buy this in these cakes. They come in 100 gram cakes and they're very, 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 very affordable. They only have a couple of colors. I really like this mild um, purple one. And then you can also buy it in um, 50 gram balls, which are more expensive because um, they have been um, washed. So the yarn blooms a lot after it's been washed. And I'm not sure if you can tell the difference, but um, the purple is unwashed and this one um, is washed so it doesn't have any of the lanolin and anything in it anymore. Um, and the they, um, these come with a label and so you can see it just says Black Hill Soft Wool, but it is by Garnet Salk. And these are pretty much comparable to Hold Super Soft in these yarns, so it's a very light fingering, almost lace weight yarn. But I prefer this brand to Supersoft and Jesse Rennie and all of that. I just prefer the fabric that these give me. So I, yeah, I really like it. I order it straight from Denmark. It's kind of iffy with Google Translate and all of that. But I do it every now and then. And I just really like their yarn. All right. So that is my Otra sweater. Um, and that's pretty much all that I've been knitting on this week. I haven't knit on my red sweater at all. Um, it still doesn't even have needles attached to it because they're on my ultra sweater. But um, I vow to get back to that. 
Um, I'd like to get back to that rather sooner than later because I want to be wearing that on Christmas, which is totally doable, but it won't be doable if I have it sitting in a project bag for another four weeks because then that'll be that. Um, and really, I stole the needles off that sweater, but once I have tried um, the Ultra on and I know that it fits, which I think it should, then I can return my other needles back to my other sweater and I can work on both. And I can probably go crazy because I have two sweaters which are on Stockinet Island, but oh well. All right, um, that is it in terms of my knitting, but I do have some yarn to show you. Um, yeah, <laughs> I have no excuses, except I de some yarn. I mean, you guys, are you proud of me? Um, you may or may not know that in, when was it, July, I joined in the Hedgehog Fibers Fate Club. Um, that was something I've always wanted to do and w one time I just decided to splurge and get myself the Fate Club, which is, I think you get three skeins um, each month for three months and they create a um, Fate out of all nine skeins. So that's the idea. So I thought that would be great because I want to knit a faded boxy and Hedgehog Fade sets are pretty hard to get and I got them in the sock um, base, which I really love. So I thought if worse comes to worse, um, I can just knit lots of socks. And I've loved all their previous Fade Clubs. And so the shipments came in in like August. Did they come in August? Or maybe it was September, October, November. I'm not sure. And I was so excited about it, and then I was just very disappointed. Um, nothing wrong with Hedgehog Fibers, they just, this time around, the one time when I join in and spend a bunch of money, I just didn't really like the colors that I got. So I'm really, really happy to say that I de-stashed um, the ones that I didn't like, and I've taken the time to de-stash a couple of other things as well. So I'm actually like getting rid of yarn, which is amazing, except it makes it so okay to buy more yarn. So then that kind of goes out of the window. But now I'm really, really happy because I've kept, I have a couple of hedgehog skeins now that I really, really like. And I um, gave the other ones to people who enjoy them. And I actually have a couple of other hedgehog fiber club skeins in my de-stash right now. So I'm mailing to that actually in case anyone is interested, and sorry, that was a shameless plug. Um, anyways, um, all that aside, some yarn left my stash, so new yarn came in. And first of all, I think I mentioned that I'm on a sock kick, and what happens is I follow people who knit lots of socks on Instagram, and then sometimes I just see a picture, and I'm like, okay, now I need to order that. So that's what happened. Um, you haven't really seen me knit with this yarn, which is um, Cyber by, by Shoppel. Um, I know lots of people love these um, crazy Cyber Ball yarns or Cyber Ball yarns, all of that. They have a couple of different ones. And I think I've knit with that yarn once or twice. I know I knit, I think, two pairs of socks out of this yarn in the last couple of years. But I don't know. I used to not really like it because the normal Zauberball, the non-crazy Zauberball, is a unplied yarn. So you can see with this one, it looks like it's plied, which is why I bought it, because I thought it was a plied one. But this is just a singles and they don't last forever. I mean, there's nylon in it, but it's just not like a natural or logic solution to knitting socks. But they're very soft and they're very fun. Um, but they're crazy Zababall um, yarns, they are plied. So they're more like a handspun two-ply yarn and they still won't last forever and ever and ever, but I think they're good enough sock yarns. So what I'm trying to say is, um, after many years of not really being too sure about these yarns, I just, I just really, really thought they were so much fun and I got myself a couple. So I got myself three balls of this yarn and I should probably say, because I sound like a rep, I am not sponsored or anything by anyone. This is just me spending my money, um, my own money, um, and I'm not getting anything for showing this, reviewing this, whatever. And who even knows if Shop <laughs> would uh, likes the things that I have to say about this yarn? Anyways, um, 
So I got three um, of these um, sock balls, um, they're called Sauberball, and the crazy ones, like I said, are the ones that are applied. This one is, let's see what this is the colorway. It says, knitting can be addictive. Where does it say the colorway, you guys? Oh, there, right there. This is the Zimtschnecke colorway. Zimtschnecke means cinnamon roll. Um, and I've been wanting to get this colorway for so long. So these are definitely going to be for me. Actually, all of these may be for me because I'm just wanting to knit all the socks. And since I got rid of quite a few pairs of hand knit socks recently, I feel like I can knit myself some more. Um, I also got this one, which I will say looked more turquoise and less green. So this is a very untypical choice for me. Um, this is called Tiefe Wasser, which means deep seas or deep waters. Deep waters, I guess. Um, it's very green, but then you can see like other fun colors um, coming through. So I'm hoping that maybe if I knit really long socks, I, I will find some other colors in here, which would be really fun. Also, these could totally be for Kai or like there's so many knit worthy people in my family now, now especially now that all of my in-laws are also into hand knit socks. So that won't be a problem. Actually, my father-in-law would really like these as well. And then this one, like I said, I was a little bit surprised because I didn't, I just didn't read the label properly when I bought this um, online. I thought this was applied one, but it's not. So this is a normal Zauberball. Um, and I can't pronounce this colorway. I'm not sure if it's a German word. I doubt it. It's probably a reference or something. But the colors are really, really beautiful. Um, you can see here, it looks like it's plied. So that's why I fell for it. Um, but I may just knit these for myself and they'll be house socks and who knows, maybe they'll last for a while. I don't really ever have holes in my socks, except for the other day, I, for the first time ever, found a hole in a hand spun sock. So I actually darned that. But besides that, it's only Kai who ever gets holes because he is much harder on his socks. And the socks that I knit him, um, I actually knit him socks once out of a Zauberball that didn't contain any nylon. And even those lasted like a good year before he had a hole in, a, in them. And this one does have nylon in it, so it should be fine. So that is my sock knitting haul. Can't wait to knit with these. Also, I'm just really enjoying the yarns right now where I don't have to ball them up. Like, I can just knit from them and just go. Um, and then... A while ago, I was also enabled by both Ellie of Skandier and Lerke of um, Fiber Tales podcast. And because everyone kept going on about this one yarn and I was like, fine, I just want it now. Um, and that yarn is Snelden yarn. I'm not sure if that's pronounced right, but it is a Danish yarn. It's a Falkland wool as far as I can tell. And this is from the Faroe Islands. So this is yarn that both Ellie and Lerke have been using and just it's just it just sounded like such a yarn that I want. Like it's a very natural sheepy yarn. Um I think it also comes in dyed colors, but I just got the natural versions because I just love a good rustic and natural yarn. Um it just says a hundred gram, but I got the four ply weight version. I think it's a two ply, but this is about a fingering weight version. Um, I got this from like a Faroese um, knitting website. You'll probably find it if you Google it. I think you can also get it from a couple of places in the UK and God knows where else, but I just decided to get it straight from the source. And then later realized that that may, may have not been so smart because I was like, I'm ordering from Denmark. Like it's EU, it should be super easy. And then a friend of mine who had just been to the Fairy Islands um, said, well, it's actually not that easy because there are some different rules between the islands and Denmark and all of that. And I was a little bit worried that this year may never arrive or I would have to pay like import tax or whatever, but I didn't. So it just arrived. Um, it was quite affordable too. And I just got a couple of skeins of their fingering weight, weight version. I believe they also have a decay weight, but don't quote me on that. 
So I got, I think, three or four skeins of this super light grey. It was hard to pick colours because the place where I was ordering them from was a very, very basic website. It was fine, it was affordable, it was perfect, but they didn't have many photos, so I just kind of decided to just see how it goes and yeah, the risk wasn't super high. But so this is the main colour that I got and I love it. I'm really happy with it. It's a super light beige grey. Um, it's a little bit marled. It's like a heathered kind of look and I really, really like this. And then I just got two different greys to go with it, so I thought I could knit like a colorwork sweater in neutral tones and this would be beautiful. When I ordered this I actually thought this would be perfect for like an ultra sweater, but then the pattern came out before I got the yarn, so I cast on with something else, but it could still be one. It could still be many things, so I'm super happy about these. They're very, very sheepy, they definitely smell like sheep, it's a non super wash yarn. If you're not into like the rustic color work yarns, this won't be your thing, but I think this is going to bloom and just wear beautifully. I, I, I'm really excited about this stuff. So yeah, those are my acquisitions, even though I have, I have had them for a while. They, are, they aren't super new acquisitions, but you know I try to kind of spread out things over podcasts. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much what's been happening in my yarny life. Um, besides that, um, I'm just really enjoying right now the fact that for once I don't have to work so hard. Um, I'm still theoretically and practically working full time, but just I've been working a lot these last two years pretty much. And I'm just getting a lot more knitting time right now and finishing early and it's, it's just really, really fun. I'm really enjoying it and I'm just hoping it stays that way until Christmas. Um, so that's what's been happening. And then yesterday, um, Kai and I, we took the train up to Würzburg. Um, Würzburg, for those of you who are in Germany, is actually the place where we both met. Um, um, and moved in together and all of that. So we spent like the first two and a half years of our relationship there. Lots of good memories. Um, it's also the place where um, I studied. Um, it's also relatively close to where I am originally from. So it's always fun to go back. And I think it's only the second time ever since moving to Munich that we actually went back together. So we've been in Munich for three and a half years almost now, which is crazy. Um, so we just decided to go out for a day trip. We left really early. Um, I think we got up like, I don't know, 6.30 in the morning and Kai was ready to just cancel the trip and stay in bed, but we did make it. Um, so we were in Würzburg for breakfast with um, friends and then just met up with a couple of different friends, did some shopping, um, discovered that there seems to be only one yarn store left there which is so sad and the one that I used to go to um, has closed down it's really sad um it's just like Würzburg was where I was when I started knitting or when I restarted knitting I should probably say because I knew how to knit from when I was much younger so they just used to have this typical German yarn store that had like all the German sock yarns, like they had just a wall of Regia, Lana Grossa, Ostermann Step, all these typical German sock yarns. And I would just walk in there every couple of weeks and get myself a ball of yarn and then knit a pair of socks. And when I finished those, I would walk in there again and get another ball of yarn. And yeah, that's just kind of how my knitting started off, knitting all the socks and not having a stash and yeah, I would have really liked to go back to that place, but oh well. It's just really funny to think about it. Um, yeah, so that was a big trip yesterday. It was super, super fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, lots of good memories. And um, you can see everyone now like getting into Christmas spirits, which I am very, very um, there for. And we had some amazing Thai food because at some point we just kind of crashed. It was a long day. And then I think we got back into Munich at like 9 p.m., which was fine, except then there were like lots of troubles with the underground and getting home. And in the end, we ended, to, we ended up taking two underground trains and then even walking for another half hour. 
But um, safe to say, it was really fun. Um, we walked something like 10k yesterday. My feet are sore because I'm not used to walking around. And walking around is fine, but you know, when you don't really walk around a lot, but you just stand around a lot, and that sort of movement is no fun. Anyways, um, it was a long day yesterday, but I really enjoyed it. And today, which is Sunday, we're just hanging out. Um, it's going to be a super chill day. I want to do all the knitting. And then on Monday, we are getting new internet. So supposedly everything will be much faster and much better. And who knows, maybe I will have a podcast uploaded in like 10 minutes. Who knows? I just hope that the whole thing won't end up with us not having any internet at all because that would be catastrophic, especially because I'm working from home. So fingers crossed that will work out tomorrow. And then on Tuesday is Kai's birthday, so he will get his nitty birthday gifts. No worries, the socks are for Christmas, so I'm all good there. I don't need to do any sort of last minute knitting. Um, and yeah, um, his parents are coming down for a visit. Um, yeah, just a lot of like social things happening, which is really fun. All right, I think that is all that I have to share with you today. So thank you so much for watching this podcast. I really hope that you have enjoyed it. Um, maybe I will see you again next week. I will definitely be here. Until then, happy knitting. Thank you for watching. Bye.